let's start the demonstration. So far, I use a Scala font to demonstrate the uh, Scala application. Since we are moving towards the advanced concepts, we need the proper editor. So you can use any editor to uh, develop your functional program. So in this demonstration today, I am using an editor called Atom. So this Atom editor, you can download it from Atom.ie website. After you install it, you have to add some add-ons to the uh, editor. So then you can use it for uh, Scala or any other programming language. Right. So the demonstration today, I'm going to use this Atom editor. So it's kind of a good test editor where you can uh, change or can alter based on your requirement. I install the Atom editor. So when you start that, it looks like here. So in order to use Scala with this editor, uh, you may need to install a few packages to the editor. So after installation, you go to Atom preferences button. Under preferences, you go to the packages. So you can see various packages under that. So there are four packages. Basically, usually these four packages are already installed. So, so I have installed some community packages uh, in order to use Scala and the other features of those editors. So in, in case you want Java programming, you can install this IDE Java package. And then I recommend you to install language Scala package for Scala programming. And in case you want to get a terminal within the editor, you, I recommend uh, this IDE terminal package. And if you want to run a, uh, any scripts by pressing some buttons, uh, so you have to install script. Run the code in Atom, you have to install the script uh, uh, package. So if you want to run only Scala with this Atom, you install a script package and language Scala package with your editor. So then you're ready to go. Right, I have already installed those. Right, so now, uh, we can start uh, developing Scala programs within the editor. Let me write a uh, simple program. We will start the uh, demonstration on these rational numbers. So I will write an object. Uh, let's say, let's call it uh, my application. And I extend, extend, Sense app, right? Uh, so, yeah, I want to create a variable called rational number, let's say R1, and it is a, a new rational number which takes maybe two and three. Right. Then I would like to. Intel in this rational number R1. Right. So, so there are no type for rational, predefined type because of that. We have to define this data type. So how do you do that? We have to create a class for rational for that. So I'm creating that class rational. We take two input. Uh, n and uh, uh, d input and so I define numerator function that returns int which equal to n. 
then I define uh, denominator. Maybe I don't need return type this time. Yes, and then we say D. Right. So since I am using println, so println require this class as a method called uh, two string. So two string methods automatically called by println. So because of that, I am overriding right uh, method to string. Uh, so two string methods basically uh, create a string that is a uh, uh, numerator. numerator. Then I add the uh, division mark and then I add uh, denominator. So this is my uh, two string method. So this is a simple definition of the rational class. Now I have to save that if I run it first time. So maybe I save somewhere. Stop uh, color. I name it maybe rational dot scala. So uh, this is my scala function. So now I would like to run that so in the atom editor. Uh, so we I have to type command and I am the uh, Mac OS. So you check with the new operating system which key, uh, which uh, which uh, hotkeys to type in order to run this program. So you can, uh, otherwise you go to uh, package script, uh, package script and run, run script. So in the Mac OS, it is command line. So when you visit a package script and then run script, you may see the a shortcut to run them. So in the Mac, it is command line. When I type command line, you see this program will compile with Scala and execute and show the results here on the down, the terminal. So you see it's type two divided three, uh, a numerator and denominator of this particular rational number. So I create R1 and print that. And let me create another number then, R2 maybe, uh, with the same type. Rational. Maybe this time I use this as denominator and denominator. Uh, denominator. And then I ln R2 as well. So let me secure the program. P R I N T L N. I made a mistake. Correct. So you see two rational numbers are printed on the term. So now I would like to introduce. Uh, function to this rational uh, to add function to add the two rational numbers. Uh, so when we introduce a function within the class which works on top of the data, so such functions we call it as a method of this class. So we create a uh, method of addition. So I define that which take a rational number as input right and returns the addition and it returns an addition it's actually it returns a new rational number as a result of addition 
So I create a new rational number, a number uh, which actually uh, multiplication and the addition of these uh, two parts. So you can check my slides to find the definition of rational addition. So it is basically this numerator. This refers to the rational number uh, itself multiply with the number given R denominator. Then we add uh, then we uh, add uh, this denominator this uh, this uh, no, multiply R numerator. numerator. So this is the numerator of a addition, new number. And then uh, the denominator of the new number is Uh, then we need to enter the uh, uh, denominator of the new number. Uh, denominator of the new number is uh, denominator of this number multiply uh, denominator of the given rational number. So, may I write some here? So this is uh, this uh, this uh, uh, you know multiply uh, R the no this is this is the, this is the definition of rational addition uh, numerator multiply to denominator first. R numerator multiplied to this denominator. Uh, this numerator multiplied to uh, denominator of given R, and this the this uh, numerator multiplied with the this denominator multiplied with this numerator. This is a new numerator, and then the other part is this denominator multiplied uh, R denominator. So that is the definition of rational addition. So I uh, define the add function or add method. Now I can add these two numbers. So let's say R1 add R2. So that should be, I have to take that or another value, value x equal r1 and at r2. Then I say here, print r1, and maybe I print plus uh, one here. Uh, maybe I, uh, like that, maybe I print r, here I print print ln maybe x like that. So this is question number one, r2, we add these two together, r1 and r2, it get x and print x. And let me save it and execute the program. Uh, I'm going to let me spin. Uh, Fresh uh, 
No, this should be rational. So you see, it's add together, and we get the highs. So sometimes, so this is not the uh, simplest form of the rational. So for example, let me define the rational matter this, and maybe right here, and then I add them together. So we see, we get the addition of these two rational number. So it's 48 over 32. So that is the, not the simplest form. So if you want to make rational number always in the simplest form, this is also not the simplest form. So what should I do? So I have to divide denominator and the numerator with the GCD of NND. So I can, for that, I have to define first uh, greatest common divisor function. So that needed within this class. So I make it as private, private function and define it uh, in CD as a recursive function. So it's a integer a and integer b. So, an integer b equal uh, to this function equal to e b equals zero g c d is a and g c d is b. and A mod B. So that is the recursive definition of BCD. So what I can do now, instead of N here, I divide N with BCD N and B. Similarly, I divide G with BCD in and B. So because since I do that, when rationally falls, it's automatically execute the statements and then it simplifies the definition of the rational number. Even I define that you might see now within the class it gets simplified. Let me run now. Okay, so since it is a recursive function, we need to define the return type here. So you see, so I given the rational number as 2, 4, but it simplified 1, 1, 2. So I given 6, 8, but it simplified it here as 3, 8. So then it multiply, uh, add together. So it add together and automatically simplify. So that's how we can apply, create a private function and apply it in the constructor. Similarly, as you may understood, if that D gets zero, so we get divide by zero error. So always the D should be a positive number. So for example, if you put a rational number like that, so so it's kind of we get in zero here, but it's it's not true. It should be actually a rational numbers always. Uh, the denominator should be greater than uh, greater than zero. So, so how how can we do that? So we can use a keyword called require a, a function for require require and say d should be greater than 
save. So if we do so, when we pass zero here, it automatically uh, should uh, create an error. So you see it's throw the error saying uh, uh, this way, the required. So if you want our own error message, we can uh, pass it uh, as a second parameter. So like we say, uh, uh, like D, uh, zero or something like that. Yes. Now it throws the error uh, and then tells our error message here. So require function can apply uh, and validate the input values to this uh, rational class. Okay. So now, so you see rational class basically take two input values. Sometimes uh, we may need to define the rational with only with the uh, only with new writer. So if you create a rational only with new writer, so denominator is always one. So that is, uh, so we have a constructor, what we call with two parameters. If you put one, we need to have a constructor with a single parameter. Otherwise, uh, it may uh, not uh, work, right? So you see, this may not work. So how do you do that? Uh, for that, basically, uh, we have to create a uh, axillary uh, constructor. Axillary constructor. So for that, uh, you use uh, this keyword. Here you see uh, we create an axillary constructor definition right here. You see this. This refers to the same rational class. Uh, this constructor only take uh, one input and it is equal uh, to uh, to this i call the same with uh, x and one something like that so actually i'm passing n here so because if you get n on the numerator and then i call numerator and one the original construct. This is axillary construct. So if I define such axillary construct, so I can call this, I can create rational number with only one input parameter. Let me run that now. So I use uh, this is not wrong, but I define this axillary constructor. Uh, let me see why I did that. Right. Uh, so this axillary constructor is here. Uh, and then let's, let's run that. You see it's well stuff. So I'm creating a rational number R1, 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 R1 with only two. So it's create rational number two over one, like that. So then it works as previously. So I created what you call it as actually accelerate function. Similarly, if I want this add method, I can replace with class. So if so, I can write something like that. Uh, 
you see it's right. so now i use r1 plus r2 so it's like adding two rational numbers so this rational is the type i created myself in this same problem right so it has the numerator denominator and i check the parameters i define the addition so now I, let's say I want to define the uh, negative value of the rational number. So for that, I create a method uh, called neg. Uh, negative value is the rational number is equal to a new rational number with minus uh, Operator. And it's better always use this. And I know that I'm referring to the same class. This. So this is a negative of the rational number. So for instance, now instead of x, I can call x dg net. So then instead of 11 or 4, I will get minus 11. So I, so I run that. So you see, it created a negative function. So in case I want subtraction, so I can use the negative and addition to create the subtraction. So subtraction, I use this subtraction uh, sign or minus sign, and then I put in question as the input. Uh, so that is equal to you know, R. Uh, this plus R negative. So we add uh, this rational number to the R negative. So R negative is minus. So then this plus R negative is actually this number plus R1. So I, using the negative, I create subtraction of rational numbers. So, so if I want to now get the subtraction, so I can use now R1 minus R2 is assigned to X, so I print X here. So let me run that. So you see R is first rational number, second rational number. R1 minus R2 is this, right? So we get the answer. So like that, we can uh, create uh, several functions um, which applies to these rational numbers. So maybe if you want to kind of have a, a function which uh, check the less than or equal, the less value of the rational number. So I take the number for that as a parameter. So then this is the definition of uh, the less than. So let's say this uh, numerator multiplying that, whatever the number pass, uh, to be denominator is less than uh, this uh, numerator, this, uh, uh, that numerator plus this denominator, uh, this uh, multiply that numerator. So that is definition of less than. So these are the two rational numbers. So I can pull 
all green yellow. Uh, I want to check whether if x less than less uh, y like that, then it should wait a moment. So my x is whatever r1 minus r2, so it should return true because all since I reduce r2 from r1, so actually x is less than r1, so I get true here. So it's rational less. So using less function, maybe I can create a, a function maybe called max to get the maximum of two given number. Let's say there is a rational class that. So I want to see whether the number which pass is greater than of this number or not. So there I say D, uh, this plus that number then that and its maximum is this. Right? So this is max. So if I want to get the maximum of two given rational numbers, I can call now x max R1. It tells me that which one is the maximum. So it should be uh, R1, right? Uh, so I uh, let me see that. So, you see, it's with this part one of the larger one. So, like that, we can implement any operations as functions to work of this rational. So, and call those. Maybe we can call one after each function so for example we can say r1 plus r2 uh, then create another number r3 maybe like that uh, uh, it is let's say one like here and then i can say r3 like that x r1 plus r2 minus r3 is x and bring the value of x here. It return D must be greater than C. It says D must be greater than C. That happens because we pass here the negative and this D C D returns a negative. So then basically denominator get negative and here require triggers. So when you calculate the greatest common divisor of this uh, numerator and denominator, we should get a positive value. Otherwise, when you get a negative value for the GCD, divide negative to negative, it becomes a 
positive, positive, negative, it becomes negative, and the denominator gets negative, and that error happens. So because of in order to correct that, what I do so always denominator greater than zero. So I don't need to worry about D, but I need to worry about N numerator. It should be a positive value. It is negative. So, so numerator may be a negative value for minus rational number, but when you pass that to the ECD function, we have to pass the positive value like that. And I think it should work. Right. See, it works now. We get the correct R1 minus R2 plus R1 is R1 is R2 is R1. So we R1, R1 minus R2 works first and then add R2. We can do like that as well. You see, it's yours. So that's how the rational, uh, rational class works or the data structure works. So like that, we can add some methods that is a function of this data. And then we could use it in our application. So if you call, define this as functions, so every time we create a rational number, this function will disappear. So if we openly call it, it may not uh, efficient. So instead of f, if you wish, we can make them as values. similar as before. Right. So that's all about my rational uh, number demonstration. So you try to solve the back application. So I will later on create a demo on it and uh, upload that to the lens. Thank you.